Hello and welcome to another episode of the Bad Ideas Garage. My name is Steven and this is a 2009 Honda Ridgeline RTL. Now the Ridgeline has got a lot of really interesting perceptions of what the Ridgeline is. Is it a truck? Is it a big van? What the heck is it? Well, I'm going to be reviewing this and giving a little bit of my thrilling commentary about what the Honda Ridgeline is. And I personally think it is a nice truck. It's a good alternative for those people who want to have a utility vehicle, you know, some all-wheel drive, be able to go to Home Depot and stick stuff in the back without having any problems. And so you don't have to drive a crossover. And so you don't have to drive a minivan. That's why this vehicle exists. Enjoy your episode. <laughs> Surprise! And stops! And stops! Now, as I said, there are people who are critical of this vehicle because even though it looks like a truck, the underpinnings are not really a truck. It's a unibody frame, which means that it shares a lot of the underpinnings with other Honda products, things like the Honda Odyssey, the Honda Accord, depending on which generation that this is. Now, this is a 2009 model, and so it's a little bit more trucky than some of the earlier models. And this is actually the first time that I've ever been in one of these. We do have a 2001 Honda Odyssey, and that was where Honda was thinking about what sort of products can they share and what sort of things can they use in some of their more global platforms. And so the way that this car drives is actually really similar to our 2001 Honda van. So when I drive this later today, it's going to be interesting to see how much is this car like that van, because honestly, a van drives really nicely, and sometimes trucks get kind of a bad rap because of the body on frame chassis. They don't necessarily drive as nice. And so I know that Honda has been touting this as, yes, this is something that is very utilitarian. You have the space in the back for truck things. However, you don't have to deal with the truck ride. And I have a feeling that that's something that I'm really going to be enjoying as I drive this truck later. So what I'm going to be doing in this video is I'll give you a nice tour of this Honda Ridgeline and give some driving impressions as I drive around the beautiful Willamette Valley today to let you all make an informed decision about is this truck sort of thing something that you should buy if you're looking for a family vehicle with the utilitarian bed usage of having a truck but you don't necessarily want to be driving a body on frame vehicle all right so we are going to walk on into the ridge line this one comes with the uh fob as usual as a lot of honda products and this one let's uh, go ahead and start with just getting things out of the way you of course have your power door locks and your power mirrors and your power windows etc uh, you have a back window that goes down that's pretty cool this one is the rtl so it has a sunroof which is all sorts of exciting and cruise control um you know a lot of standard stuff you have uh, your audio controls right here um over here you have a cargo light you know things that you normally see in a, a truck anyways um, and then your light control, your um, stability control on off button, it's your fog lamps. Uh, this particular one has uh, a foot controlled uh, e-brake where you just press that. Uh, this actually feels kind of old school compared to, you know, maybe some newer vehicles. But you have a four wheel drive lock. So this is a front wheel drive vehicle that has a real real drive axle that can come live uh, when you need it. And so you can actually lock it in four wheel drive all the time by using that. Uh, other things that we have, uh, so you have your, your dome lights, so if you want to leave, you know, have your dome lights on all the time, that's what this button is. Uh, this is for your climate control, this one has he uh, heated seats. Um, I do like that this has, this is a USB port, and then a standard um, outlet for a cigarette lighter. What else? Um, you have a little bit of a storage compartment here. I do like that this is rubber, and you have some uh, cup holders right here that actually have, uh, I like the cutouts that you can actually put like, you know, water bottles there and such. So, but let's go ahead and start this up. It says, welcome, that's really nice. There we go. So that sounds really nice. Um, this one has, you know, about 106,000 miles on it, which is pretty cool. Let's go ahead and take a listen for a rev. I honestly love the sound of this engine. So this actually has a cone mounted shifter, which is which is really, really weird when you, you know, want to put it into gear and stuff. Um, this does have uh, selectable gears to have your lower range, and then this actually has the D3 control right over here. Um, yeah, you know, I don't, I'm not sure who would be able to use that or want to use it, but there it is. What else? Um, this has a, you know, a couple different things. It looks like you can use um, an older hands-free system, although this has a um, an aftermarket system in it, so uh, that's not something that's going to be in use. It tells you your tire pressure, 
instant fuel economy, and then it should sell you what your um, overall fuel economy is. So um, Steven, who's the owner of this, tells me that his um, fuel economy, he wished it was a little bit better. Um, this is on his commute, and he gets just about 18 miles the gallon, uh, which is, I guess, not too far off from other trucks of the era. Modern trucks get a lot better fuel economy than they did back in the day, but um, you know, this is a you know, um, a 13 year old vehicle at this point. It tells your oil life. What else do you have? Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to leave it, uh, I'm going to leave it in, uh, in English for, uh, yeah, no information available. Tire pressure is okay. Oh, it tells your individual tire pressures. That's pretty cool. All right. So that's what we got with that. Uh, all right. Um, so because this has an aftermarket, um, this used to be one huge unit, and uh, we actually were able to get an insert to be able to get uh, the aftermarket unit in place. And uh, you have a little storage cubby here, which is really nice. Um, other than that, these seats are um, they are pretty nice. I do like that we have the butt warmers. If you see my other videos, you know that I really like that. Um, they are really they have, they have a little bit of a nice bolster to them. They're um, they're really supportive. I've been driving around a little bit now um, in these, and they are really nice seats. Um, you have a you know a glove box down here, which is really nice and big. Let's go ahead and take a look in this back seat. And so you know, I'm about six feet tall and um, I am more than comfortable back here. A little map pocket back here, which is nice. Of course, you have your window control right there. Um, it looks like you do have a power outlet there, which is pretty nice. A couple of hooks, take things down. You can control your air, but you can't control the temperature back here. You pull down this center armrest right here. Um, you have some of these really nice and wide cup holders. Again, you can you can actually put a water bottle in there, a little storage cubby, etc. I do like that this one is this really pretty blue color. So we're going to move into the whole tailgate situation. So this does have an aftermarket um, uh, camera for the rear view, um, which um, the one uh, that is right here that's integrated didn't work with the aftermarket. Um, a head unit, but uh, and this one has the special Type R logo. No, this is not sadly the Type R um, Honda uh, Ridgeline four wheel drive, which is really too bad. However, uh, one thing about this tailgate that I really like is that over here there is this release. If I can get it to go, there it goes. All right, and back here uh, is your bed. And so, um, I really like that you have the one way tailgate release like this but you can also take down the tailgate, just like regular tailgate right here. And this has just, you know, lots of storage back here. Um, you know, some people will be like, well, you can't stick a full sheet of plywood or whatever back here. Um, I, I get that, but there is a lot of storage, which is really cool. Uh, more than enough for, you know, what a lot of people need to use. And this one obviously has gotten a lot of use because you can tell the bed has, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of dings and dents, etc. cetera, uh, in it. All right, so one thing right here is that this actually locks, which is really cool. And this is, this is absolutely massive. Also has a little water spigot right there, just in case this gets wet or whatever. This is huge. So that's where your spare tire goes, you know, and then my, my buddy has his stuff down here for, you know, emergency roadside, etc. This is absolutely massive. I mean, you can, you can just see it's several feet deep and very wide. And the cool thing is, is locking. So that's something that, you know, not a lot of trucks have. Um, however, you get this massive, huge, gigantic space, even though that, you know, there's, there's a four wheel drive system under here, you still got this massive, gigantic, uh, I guess we can call it a trunk. So this one does have a tow hitch on it, but I mean, otherwise it's a, I think it's a really nice looking car, even though it's a truck, I guess I'm calling it a car. So go me. Even I'm having troubles with that. So before I get the nomenclature wrong for yet another time, we're actually going to take this out for a drive. I'll give you my thoughts about what it's like to drive this car, truck, Honda Ridgeline thing. Okay, driving the 2009 Honda Ridgeline. Got the keys right here. Let's start up. Okay. Sounds like every Honda V6 that I have ever driven, but that's okay. Currently 61 degrees outside. I'm going to take my jacket off. Look at us. We're getting wild in Oregon that we can now take our jackets off, despite the fact that the rest of the country right now is experiencing massive heat waves. I'm borrowing this from my friend, Steven. I'm going to immediately ruin all of his seat settings. We're gonna have lots of fun. All right, we have a column shifter, which is also very fun. And I oddly feel like I am driving my dad's van again. He has a uh, 2001 Honda Odyssey that has just about 400,000 miles on it. This does feel <laughs> staggeringly much better put together. This has 106,000 miles on it, and I don't feel like I'm driving a truck. It's my first thing that I feel. I don't feel like I'm driving a truck. 
Uh, the road that I live on is not the smoothest thing in the world. It's not too bad, but it feels like I'm driving a big car, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Okay, well, I mean, I, it feels a little heavier than other, you know, Honda products that I've driven. This actually might be the heaviest Honda that I've ever driven, when I think about it. And the statistics on this are pretty are pretty good um, in terms of what it can do. And I know that some people are really critical of this because it's not actually a truck. Let's be real, it's fine. Um, it still has really good towing capacity. Um, the person that's definitely not sitting next to me, but I'm going to ask him, what's the towing capacity? 5,000 pounds. 5,000 pounds. That's not bad. Um, and uh, the payload, I think the payload is, a, you can put 1,000 pounds in the back. I think that that's what you, what you can get. But between those two stats, it's, I mean, that's, that's more than enough for what people, you know, need to do. Okay, yeah, I mean, it just, it feels a little bit heavier. Maybe, maybe that has something to do with it. I know the underpinnings of this are very similar to other Honda products at the time. Uh, the transmission shifts very smoothly. Uh, we have the four-speed in our Honda van that is notorious for being very, very bad. I know that this one has the five-speed automatic, which is a much better improved. But just, you know, driving around town, it feels a lot like the van that we have. But um, since this is a new car, it does feel more refined. I gotta say that. And it's just very, it's very smooth. And unlike the, uh, the brand new Dodge Ram that I drive with my in-laws, this feels a lot more car-like you do have a pretty good command of the road. You don't feel like you're like sitting on top of everybody else like you do in a Dodge Ram. It's just, it's it's a nice compromise between everything. So I'm going to do about 20 miles an hour and uh, I'm going to give it some beans. Okay, I think it sounds pretty good. That was definitely not fast. It was also not flooring it, so I didn't get the kick down all the way to, I guess, second gear or whatever, but that was pretty fun. All right, driving around town, uh, I think I'd much rather get this, honestly, than a full, like a full-size or mid-size truck. I'm obviously in a different demographic. But just driving around town, you have, you know, normal obstacles you have to get around or whatever. It just, like, on a road like this that has these little micro perforations for the ceiling that they, they do, I can't feel a thing. And when I was driving that Dodge Ram, you could feel, you know, every single one of them. You know, this is unibody. And again, people criticize this car because it's not a real truck or whatever, but it, I mean, I would much rather have, because 95% of the time, if I did actual truck stuff, I'd still be driving it like a regular daily car, daily driver car. So I'd much rather have the nicer drive, probably a little bit of better fuel economy than, you know, the body on frame, real wheel drive bias truck. I'm gonna give it some, some beans again. Okay, this, okay. I'm gonna preserve your gas. I'm only gonna do this a couple more times. This is a, uh, this is just not not the fastest vehicle in the world. Doesn't have too much body roll. We're, we're gonna try this again. Okay. All right. Okay. So I was not pressing it down as much as I could. That sounded really good. A little bit of a turn here. All right. Doing the mula little bit faster than the suggested speed and the car held great and now I'm doing 55 going down the road this just feels like a big car it's exactly what people say it feels like a big car it does not feel like it's a big huge massive gigantic wide truck overall driving impressions is that I do like it I I mean I would probably buy this if I was in the truck market just because it drives like a car and for the vast majority of people that need a truck I mean probably would be totally fine with something like this to be able to have the space in the back and you get a really nice ride. That's just like a really good thing about this is driving around these back roads. It doesn't matter how fast I'm going. It rides, it rides really, really well. I mean, even if you have to tow, I mean, I guess a medium sized boat, this will do it for the one time per year. You got to do it or whatever the heck it is. Uh, for 5,000 pounds, you can also get a pretty decently sized um, travel trailer as well. Obviously, if you need if you buy something that's bigger, go get a bigger bigger truck, go get an F-250, go get the diesel, whatever, because those are you know brilliant in their own right. But for the vast majority of people, this is great. I set the cruise control on this, and it's just, it's comfortable, it's very quiet, it's extremely smooth, and I guess that's what you get when you have a unibody chassis. So overall driving impressions are extremely positive, and you know, I have a soft spot for the uh, J35 Honda V6.
here on the highway. A little bit of acceleration. My instant fuel economy is 20. 20 miles a gallon. Modern trucks, uh, really modern trucks, like in the last you know five years or so, have turbochargers and um, you know some weight saving stuff using more aluminum, etc. And also 10 speed automatic transmissions. This car doesn't really get any of that. So the fuel economy on this, reported by the driver, is about 18. Which I mean, the EPA rating is like it's just about 18 overall between the city and the highway, which. That doesn't really sound like that much. However, this car is 13 years old and, you know, modern trucks with a diesel and, um, you know, 10 speed automatic. I mean, you can get 20 miles a gallon out of those really easily. Um, but then again, they're also, you know, to, to get modern trucks, they're at least $40,000 even when that's used. So car at this price point, I know that the gas mileage kind of sucks compared to what it could be. But um, in this era, a lot of trucks were in the teens, and this was just a tick better. It seemed like it probably could have been a little bit better because you don't have a V8 and you don't tow 10,000 pounds. However, in this time period, it was it was a little bit better, uh, even though right now when gas is, what, five and a half down, dollars a gallon, it kind of hurts at the pump. In our Honda van, we get like 24, 25 to the gallon-ish. It's a little bit older. Is a little bit less, but it's kind of what you're getting for, you know, this is still, when it comes down to it, still a full-size vehicle. That truck is really close to that line. <laughs> See how close that was? Yeah. Jeez. See what the uh, passing power is like. Straightening out, and... Okay, I was flooring it, as if I were passing somebody. It made a nice noise. It was smooth. I moved like five miles per hour. It's, it's not fast. So those are my thoughts and a in-depth review for the Honda Ridgeline. And there are several generations of this vehicle. And if you're looking for a utilitarian family vehicle or just something to drive around that maybe gets a little bit better fuel economy, just a little bit, uh, than the other trucks of this era and you don't want to buy a new truck that are you know fifty thousand dollars or so uh, this is a really nice option it drives very very nicely it's really smooth it feels like it's got good power and the capability is pretty nice as well i really like that it's got a big trunk in the back it's really comfortable to sit in the back even though i'm six feet tall things like that will go a really long way for the everyday practicality of this vehicle so i do recommend it if it's something that you want to buy if you want to get a truck of course i love minivans so i would just as soon go drive a minivan but i also have some kids at home and i think that minivans are awesome and i am an anomaly in that so that's the video that we have today put your thoughts and your comments in the comments section below as always thanks for watching the bad ideas garage we'll catch you next time